Hello today's video we have the following content. H2O Yuan Jia fought with Sixie's bodyguard, and turned away after two moves. Insiders, the other party did not move at all. H2O Yuan Jia was a famous martial arts master in the late Qing dynasty, and his reputation in the field of martial arts has always been high. In the minds of many people obsessed with martial arts, H2O Yuan Jia has long been regarded as a godlike invincible figure. However, H2O Yuan Jia still encountered many opponents while traveling around the world. Among them was an equally famous master called Li Rudong, and the two of them had a duel. H2O Yuan Jia and Li Rudong's martial arts level, H2O Yuan Jia was born smart and was a good material for martial arts since he was a child. He had lofty ambitions and made friends through martial arts. H2O Yuan Jia was born into a traditional escort family and had a lot of contact with martial arts since he was a child. When he was 24 years old, he defeated the man who had defeated his brother and younger brother in five minutes. Seeing this, his father taught him all the essence of martial arts one by one. At that time, the late Qing dynasty was already in danger, and society was often turbulent, so martial arts became mainstream culture to some extent. H.U.O. Yuan Jia defeated a martial artist who took the initiative to challenge him, and since then he has been known as highly skilled in martial arts. Because of his enthusiasm for chivalry, he gradually became famous in Tianjin. What really made H.U.O. Yuan Jia famous was that he wanted to compete with foreign challengers. In 1901, a Russian strongman named Suki Fan Love appeared in Tianjin Opera House to perform, and he also claimed that he could be invincible in China. H.U.O. Yuan Jia heard about this and wanted to compete with the other party, but when the agreed time came, Suki Fan Love was afraid before the fight. He had already seen through H.U.O. Yuan Jia's true skills in private, and knew that his set of fancy boxing and embroidered legs were only for performance and had no actual combat ability. But this time, H.U.O. Yuan Jia's reputation became famous and gradually spread beyond Tianjin. Later, another British strongman challenged him in Shanghai. With the recommendation of Tong Menghu member Chen Kimri, H.U.O. Yuan Jia arrived in Shanghai. At that time, all major newspapers in Shanghai were shocked and wanted to witness this proud scene. However, the British strongman actually worked in a circus and eventually fled. H.U.O. Yuan Jia won again without a fight. In these two times, H.U.O. Yuan Jia did not even stretch out a finger, but he frightened the two strong men away one after another, and his reputation gradually spread overseas. The Japanese judo community was dissatisfied with H.U.O. Yuan Jia and believed that he was not worthy of the name, so they sent more than ten masters to compete with him. After H.U.O. Yuan Jia came on stage, the Japanese team leader knew that he was a martial artist and tried to hurt people with despicable means, but he was immediately discovered by H.U.O. Yuan Jia. H.U.O. Yuan Jia fainted and hit hard, breaking the bones of the Japanese team leader on the spot, and had to admit defeat in a hurry. Thanks to the help of everyone, H.U.O. Yuan Jia founded the China Jingwu Gymnastics Association in Shanghai, which was the beginning of H.U.O. Yuan Jia's fame and history. This is also because, when the Qing dynasty continued to suffer invasion, H.U.O. Yuan Jia realized that only by relying on force could he resist foreign invaders, and the Qing dynasty's path of constantly ceding land and paying compensation and kneeling for peace was completely unfeasible. He broke his own family rules and began to recruit disciples from other families. He took this action because he wanted to save the country. Secondly, he conducted a more in-depth exploration of martial arts. The original Mizong Quan of the H.U.O. family was extremely complicated, and it often took a lot of time to understand the key points. However, H.U.O. Yuan Jia simplified it again so that everyone could quickly grasp the key points. At least, it was enough to defend themselves after learning it. At the end of the Qing dynasty, there were many masters, and H.U.O. Yuan Jia was not the only one who was famous. Li Rudong was also among them. Li Rudong's ability can actually be seen from one of his positions, Sixi's bodyguard. In 1894, Empress Dowager Sixi celebrated her 60th birthday in the Summer Palace. Prince Duan specially selected Li Rudong, who was skilled in martial arts, to demonstrate martial arts. He performed a set of boxing techniques smoothly and freely, and the court ministers all praised him. Empress Dowager Sixi was even more delighted and wanted to keep Li Rudong as a guard. Moreover, even among the guards, Li Rudong was very special because he could enter the palace with a knife. There were many martial artists in the palace, all of whom claimed to be martial arts masters. Li Rudong was so respected that others were naturally resentful. One day, Zhang Bin, a guard in the palace, deliberately provoked a fight. 
Li Rudong knew his intention and deliberately did not stand up to greet him. Zhang Bin suddenly attacked, and Li Rudong responded quickly, knocking Zhang Bin down with a backhand punch. Since then, no one in the palace dared to provoke Li Rudong. However, even though Li Rudong served as a guard for Empress Dowager Sixi, he always adhered to the character of punishing evil and promoting good in his heart. Some matters were not his choice. When the eight power allied forces invaded Beijing, Li Rudong accidentally saw several foreign soldiers wantonly committing violence against the people on the street. He was full of righteous indignation and rushed forward to fight with the other party. However, he was outnumbered and hid in a courtyard. The foreign soldiers chased after him immediately, all holding guns and cannons. Li Rudong would definitely not be able to compete. After they came up, they could not find anyone around, so they fired a few shots at random. It turned out that Li Rudong was able to escape danger by relying on the shrinking method to stick to the wall of a well. Even so, Li Rudong's reputation also rose greatly. At that time, many people who were angry but dared not speak were all happy, saying that Li Rudong defended the dignity of the nation. After the fall of the Qing dynasty, Li Rudong no longer needed to stay in the palace, so he returned to Wuking, teaching martial arts and practicing medicine. He was also a martial artist with great integrity, and set three rules for his disciples. First, do not do what is right. Second, do not eliminate evil. Third, do not save when you should. He had a high level of attainment in boxing, and created Li's Tai Chi by himself, integrating the essence of various schools. He was very generous and always generous. Whenever someone in his family came to him for help, he would agree. He never charged poor people for medical treatment. When famine came, he set up porridge stalls in Beijing and Tianjin to help the victims, and was called Little Man Chang. He spent almost all his family wealth during his lifetime, and only left more than four hectares of land for himself. Li Rudong's reputation was no less than Huo Yuanjia. In 1912, Yuan Shikai sent a letter to Wuking specifically, inviting Li Rudong to Beijing to serve as the chief martial arts coach of the Guard Army. At that time, he and Li Kunai opened the Chinese Martial Arts Association in Tianjin, and held a national competition in the Central Park. This competition was even called the World Heroes Meeting by everyone. Zhang Boeing, the principal of Nankai School, founded the Guangwu Society and specially invited Li Rudong to serve as the chief coach. Li Rudong worked hard to promote the development of martial arts and traveled back and forth between Tianjin and Beijing. Given that Huo Yuanjia also had some activities in Tianjin, the question of who was stronger between Li Rudong and Huo Yuanjia has long been a question discussed by the people. However, in reality, the two did have a duel. Huo Yuanjia is slightly inferior. In the historical field, there has always been no consensus on the duel between Huo Yuanjia and Li Rudong. In Jin Enzong's National Martial Arts Celebrities in Tianjin Literature and History Materials Collection, there are records about the duel between Huo Yuanjia and Li Rudong. However, some martial arts enthusiasts have also clarified the actual situation of this duel by collecting a lot of information. The exact time is difficult to find out, after all, this duel was not officially organized, it was just a simple exchange between two masters. The period from Li Rudong's return to his hometown in 1900 to Huo Yuanjia's departure for Shanghai in 1909 was the period when the two times overlapped. At that time, Huo Yuanjia's martial arts were becoming more and more mature, and he went to the French concession in Tianjin to work as a porter for survival. As the saying goes, real gold can shine no matter where it is, Huo Yuanjia is no exception. He quickly stood out among many porters and was selected as the leader of the porters. Li Rudong's disciple Mu Bai was expelled from the sect by Li Rudong for violating the sect rules. In order to make a living, this man had to do manual labor. He happened to work as a porter at the same dock as Huo Yuanjia. Here, Huo Yuanjia also knew something about Li Rudong. At that time, there was a martial artist named Jin Dagwin in Hexi. He was extremely strong and proficient in wrestling. He was quite famous in the Hexi area. Huo Yuanjia was very dissatisfied. After hearing the news, he took a boat to Hexi to compete with Jin Dagwin. The contest between the two sides started immediately, but Jin Dagwin was not good at martial arts and was soon defeated by Huo Yuanjia. Jin Dagwin realized that Huo Yuanjia was not an ordinary person and had a competitive mind, so he said to Huo Yuanjia, if you want to become famous, you should go to Chengwen Town to compete with Li Rudong. Huo Yuanjia was also very interested at this time. People mentioned Li Rudong repeatedly, 
so he must be a martial arts master. Therefore, Huo Yuan Jia stayed in Hexiwu for one night, and the next day he set out to Wuking Chengwen town to look for Li Ruduang. When Huo Yuan Jia entered the courtyard, Li Ruduang was leading his disciples to practice martial arts in front of the house. Seeing someone coming, Li Ruduang was also polite and greeted him warmly. Huo Yuan Jia also noticed that the other party was not arrogant at all, but very sincere. The two had a pleasant conversation and soon talked about the specific martial arts they practiced. Huo Yuan Jia said directly to Li Ruduang, What I practice is wrestling. Li Ruduang then said, Master Huo practices wrestling, so I think your skills in splashing feet are very good. At this moment, I am standing still. You can kick me with your splashing feet several times with all your strength. If I move a little, you can see your skills. Hearing this, Huo Yuan Jia kicked Li Ruduang fiercely, but Li Ruduang did not move at all. Huo Yuan Jia sensed the other party's determination and kicked him hard, but Li Ruduang remained as steady as a rock and did not move at all. At this moment, Li Ruduang said, This third kick will make it impossible for you to take it back. Huo Yuan Jia understood the meaning of admonition in Li Ruduang's words, so he did not dare to kick the third time. This was the situation of Huo Yuan Jia and Li Ruduang fighting. The two made friends through martial arts. After this battle, Huo Yuan Jia deeply realized that there are stronger people among the strong. Due to the distance, Huo Yuan Jia did not return to Tianjin. Li Ruduang also realized from the two kicks that Huo Yuan Jia was indeed gifted, so he held a banquet to entertain Huo Yuan Jia that night. Li Ruduang ordered his disciples to invite Huo Yuan Jia to have breakfast together, but they searched for Huo Yuan Jia to no avail. It turned out that Huo Yuan Jia chose to leave when it was just done. Li Ruduang felt that Huo Yuan Jia did not have breakfast, which violated the etiquette of hospitality and made him uneasy. So he sent his apprentice Li Jingxiao to chase Huo Yuan Jia for dozens of miles, but still failed to catch up. Obviously, Huo Yuan Jia left without saying goodbye this time. Later, the expelled Mu Ba returned to Li Ruduang's house and told him, Huo Yuan Jia claimed that he defeated you in Wuking after returning. This matter has spread in Tianjin. I really can't believe it, so I came here to verify it clearly. Li Ruduang believed that Huo Yuan Jia was not such a person, so he sent a disciple to find out the details. The disciple named Li San arrived at the Hay Wharf in Tianjin with Mu Ba. The porters at the wharf all said that Huo Yuan Jia had never said so. Li San immediately severely reprimanded Mu Ba. After Li San returned, he reported the truth. Li Rudong no longer trusted Mu Ba. He severely reprimanded Mu Ba and forbade him to enter the Li family again. The duel between Li Rudong and Huo Yuan Jia was originally just an ordinary exchange and discussion. However, because both of them were very famous, some people with good intentions exaggerated it and even fabricated some content to slander Li Ruduang in order to beautify Huo Yuan Jia. Under the fictional exaggeration of many film and television works, Huo Yuan Jia achieved the transformation from man to god and became a well-known hero. In comparison, Li Ruduang's side was much quieter. In terms of the works and martial arts system left by Li Ruduang, Huo Yuan Jia could not compare with him. After all, what he left behind were all tangible and accessible martial arts wealth and cultural treasures. The reason why Huo Yuan Jia's life was full of mystery was that the cause of his death itself was extremely strange. At that time, a Japanese doctor named Akino treated Huo Yuan Jia for choking cough in Shanghai and arranged for him to stay in Akino Hospital at Baidu Bridge in Huangkou. However, Huo Yuan Jia did not see any improvement after taking the medicine, and his physical condition took a sharp turn for the worse. Unfortunately, the poison was too deep and no medicine could cure it. He died on September 14, 1910 at the Shanghai Jingwu Athletic Association. His disciples later learned that Huo Yuan Jia was killed by the Japanese because he had humiliated the Japanese in the ring. When Huo Yuan Jia died, he was less than 45 years old. Li Ruduang passed away seven years after Huo Yuan Jia. He widely recruited martial arts heroes and social talents which had a huge impact and made outstanding contributions to popularizing Chinese martial arts and strengthening people's physical fitness. The two people's martial arts competition did not actually have to decide the winner. From a certain level, the fundamental purpose of their martial arts practice was similar, and they both continued to strive in this direction. Thank you for watching the video, please leave your opinion in the comments section. Don't forget to press the channel subscription button. If this is the first time you watch a video on the channel,